Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delicio with another Solo Mode review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Solo Mode for The Loop from designers Maxime Rambourg and Theo Rivieri and publisher Catch-Up Games. In The Loop you are playing time agents trying to thwart the evil plan of Dr. Fu. It's a co-op game. Let's head over the table, I'll show you how it plays. We'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, here we see all of the setup for the loop, and in this case, I am playing a solo game You controlling two characters. Uh, you can control others, and I'll explain that in a moment. I'm also playing the standard game. There are different variants that come within the game. Changes maybe some of the victory conditions, some special rules might be added, even some components that might be added, potentially losing conditions. If you are playing with one of the different game variants, you would just place it there in the screen area of your horse. Uh, HQ headquarters board, but I'm not, so I'm just going to keep it as it is, the standard game. The other thing, like I said, is I chose these two characters. I chose the Time Prowler, and the Time Prowler has a particular special ability that during the Foo phase, after dropping one Rift uh, Cube into the machine, I can cancel one of the choice, of my choice, among the ones I just dropped. And then I've also got Maybe I shouldn't have chosen this one. And this gives me a special ability that whenever I use my free movement, I can move as many arrows as I wish. Normally what would happen is if you want to take a free movement, you flip your card over to its low powered side or powered down side, and you can move one arrow. These areas on the board are known as arrows. Normally you can move one in either direction. But in his case, maybe his, I don't know. In their case, you can move anywhere you want on the board. And so that's their special ability. I could have chosen to play with more characters, like maybe Mr. Time, or Robo Finisher 404, or V-Girl. And I just uh, chose to keep things simple to only go with two characters, but you can play with multiple characters. The only difference, and really what sets the solo game apart, is that when you set up their deck, you're going to take the decks of both of them and shuffle them together. So each character starts with a starting deck of six cards. And so right here I've got 12 cards, six from each and just shuffle together and you'll see kind of how that works. The rest of the setup was basically I drew two cards from Dr. Fu's deck to determine which starting eras were gonna have a rift cube on them, which you see these little red cubes, and which of the sabotage tiles would be flipped over. And so I have two missions now I'm working on. I'm working on patch up space time, which is to remove one rift from an era, seven different eras. And I'm also working on clogging up Dr. Fu's machine, which is removing one uh, Rift Cube from wherever Dr. Fu's era might be, and I have to do that five times. If I can get four of these mission tiles completed before an end game or a, a defeat condition, and there are multiples of those, I would win. So I need four missions complete. The ways that I can lose are if these get destroyed, and I put out a vortex tile, so if this gets destroyed by having too many rift cubes on it, it gets replaced by a vortex tile. This is a time travel theme, and so this creates like a, an issue with time. And so if I get two of these in one era, or four anywhere on the board, I've lost. That's one way to lose. I also could lose if Dr. Fu's deck reaches the end and I run through it. That's a, a, another loss condition. So those three ways two vortexes in one area, four total on the board, or I run out of time basically with Dr. Fu's deck, all right? That's what I'm working to do. Um, these are what are called duplicates. And at the beginning of the game, based on player count, I drew out seven of them. What you do is you look on the back and it tells you what era to place it into. And then on the front, it tells you what era it needs to be pushed to to be destroyed, to create like a space-time continuum. So it started here, but it needs to get there. If I can somehow push this token here, it will just get destroyed and go away. I don't want these on the board because they add more Rift Cubes and I'll show you how. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is figure out who my uh, active agent is gonna be. Will it be the Time Prowler or Kazuzuzuk like here? So what I do is one at a time, I flip over the cards. And at the bottom left, you'll see whose card it belongs to. In this case, it's gonna go over here. The first one of these to get three cards is gonna be the active agent. 
flip over the next one is right here. The next one is here. And the next one is here. So the time prowler is going to be my active agent this turn, okay? And so I know that that's what I'm working with. And I know that I've got this special power of canceling one of the rift cubes. So let's go to my little chart here, my game turn. And it tells me that the first thing we're gonna do is the foo phase, all right? We're in the first phase here. It means we're gonna draw one duplicate token and make one card available. We already started with two available during setup randomly. So I take one out of the bag, uh-oh, another one in this era. And then I make one card available. It's gonna tell me right here where it goes. It goes kind of in this pink era up here, the Philosopher's Stone, okay? Next thing I do is I reveal one Foo card and I drop the Rift Cubes accordingly. So what this is going to tell me is that Dr. Foo's era, this era, is the pink era. I'm going to drop two standard Rift Cubes plus one for every duplicate token in that era. Now, this is Dr. Foo's machine. The center one is where he's pointing at. So he's going to be pointing right there. That's the Dr. Foo's era this turn. Now, we're gonna put down two plus one more because we have a duplicate token there. So we're gonna take three of these rift cubes and we're gonna drop them in the top of the machine. It's gonna go either in Dr. Fu's era, the previous era, which means the one counterclockwise, or the next era. Those are the only three it's gonna to go to. That went to the previous, that went to the previous, and that went to his era. Now, one of these I can cancel. Two went there, so I'm gonna cancel one out of there Remember, that was Time Prowler's ability. So, Dr. Fu took their action. They dropped some Rift Cubes out on the board, causing me some problems. All right, now it's my turn as an agent. So what I can do is a number of things in any order I want. I can, first of all, flip over this card to move one era, or I can spend a energy cube from the era that I'm in to move one era. Then I can also use the abilities of my cards here. All right, well, neither of these eras have any, um, have any rift cubes. So they don't, it doesn't do me any good to look at this that tells me to remove one rift cube from my era. Unfortunately, it's not gonna help me. I'm not within one space of an era that has rift cubes. What I'd love to do is get over here because if I removed a rift cube from here, I would be one fifth of the way to completing that mission of clogging up Dr. Fu's machine. And also, I need to remove rift uh, cubes from eras to do the patch up space time. I'm just not in a position to do that. So unfortunately, the best I can do is to, let's do this. I'm gonna flip over my token to move one, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is my brawler's gloves, which says push one duplicate token that is on your era. So I'm gonna push either one of these that I push will destroy them. Because if I push this one here, it'll get destroyed. But I'm actually gonna push this one here to get it destroyed because there's two rift cubes there. All right, so I've done that. I could use my bags of tricks here to add one energy onto the previous era. So let's do that, which is gonna be right here maybe setting up an energy for another one. Now this one unfortunately can't get used because it just says remove one rift from your era. But one thing I could do is what's called a loop. And this is where kind of this time travel theme comes in. To do a loop, you spend one energy for your first loop from the era that you're in, okay? So in this case, I'll spend the energy from the era that I'm in. And then you look at the exhausted cards and you can ready any one symbol. Now in this case, unfortunately, these are two different symbols. If they were the both the same symbol, I could ready them both and redo them. But what I wanna do is push another token. So I re-ready that and I do it again. I push this over here and that gets exploded. So I did get rid of two duplicate tiles, that's nice. I couldn't use this, unfortunately, so these just get discarded, okay? Now, the other thing that I can do, since I've finished up my actions and I used a loop, now if I wanted to do another loop, you can keep doing it, you have to pay one more than you had before. So to do a second loop, I'd have to spend two cubes, which obviously aren't there. I can add this card, since it's in my era, to the top of my deck. 
This doesn't have an, an agent's uh, sign, so you can put this to either one. So that just goes to the top of my deck, all right? Had I been in a tile that had been completely finished, I could then claim that tile to archive it and be one quarter of the way to victory, but I'm not. And then this gets flipped back over. We're gonna refill our hand. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this card and I already know what it is, and I'm gonna put it towards here because I would like him to go next if I could. There and there, and maybe it won't. And there, okay, so then Chris Dizzlesakir would be the next one to go. And I would just compete, complete uh, this process over and over again until I'm either able to complete these missions and defeat the nefarious Dr. Fu, or he's able to manipulate the time-space continuum in such a way that these get destroyed. Again, anytime you have more than uh, you have space for, so if I had three here and had to add another one, this would get destroyed. A vortex would go into there. Even if I had had, let's say I'd had maybe five cubes, five out of the seven cubes or even six, but I wasn't able to do it, that would get wasted and get destroyed. And so that's generally speaking how the game plays. Again, you could play with more characters. You would have to just control them all. And you're trying to get your mission completed before too many vortexes come out or you move this down. As soon as all of these are played, it would then get reshuffled and go down. And now you're putting out two duplicate tiles every time, and finally three duplicate tiles every time, and you could see how things would ramp up relatively quickly, and you need to get your missions completed. All right, that's it for the overview. Let's head over and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea on how the game is played. It doesn't really change much as a solo game, being that it's a pure co-op. So, first thing I like to do is talk about some solo benchmarks, things that I use to discuss pros and cons in solo gaming. The first are win conditions. Are there a specific win-loss conditions? Is it a beat your high score variant? Well, this is a pure cooperative game. And so there's a clear win-loss condition. There's actually multiple lo losing conditions as tends to be the case with cooperative games and one winning condition. Now, the victory conditions might vary slightly depending upon what variant you're playing, but in the standard game, you're trying to complete four missions. So um, the, the win-loss win condition is exactly what you'd expect it to be. Pure co-op works very well for solo gaming. Setup and teardown. Now this is one that I'm pleasantly surprised by because it's a regular sized game, almost you know, a medium to large sized box. And so there's a concern sometimes that the setup and teardown can be a little bit time consuming, but not so in the loop. It's a very quick to set up game, very easy to get going and playing. You're talking within minutes, you're set up, and within minutes you're torn down again. And that's something that really can make a difference when you're choosing what game to get off the shelf as a solo gamer. The rules were clear, they were concise, they were very, very easy. The nice thing also is that, being that it is this pure co-op, all of the base rules apply. There's one single uh, sheet, a, a separate sheet within the box for the solo game. And why that's great is that it does talk about the few things that are different, but it also gives some illustrated examples in those cases where things are different. That's fantastic. If you're not interested in the solo game, you've got the main rule book, you don't even have to think about it. If you do want to know how the solo game works, you've got a separate sheet. It's very clear, very concise, fantastic job with the rules, specifically uh, as the solo game goes, but also in general, a very well done, clear, and easily understandable rule book. Other thing I like to do is talk about art and components. Now, the art is always going to be something that's subjective, of course, but in my case, I adore the art for the loop. I think it's got this really cool vibe that it's almost hard to pin down and describe it. I just know that I like it. It's colorful, it's bright, it has a, a bit of a cartoony edge, but it's not silly necessarily. It's quirky, it's odd, but it's not, in my mind anyway, off-putting or just weird for the sake of being weird. I just think that they've got kind of their own world that they've created here, and it's one that I like to play in. It's, it's this kind of weird, quirky time travel, and although, to be fair, the theme of time travel is barely there. There's, you know, this idea of previous eras and next eras and current eras. It's not a, you know, a huge element of the game. I do like the theme. I have no issue with it. I just think that the art is fantastic. The quality of the components are all very good. The cardboard is good. The little cube, uh, I don't know if you can call it a cube tower, but the cube randomizer is of good quality. The wooden meeples are nice and chunky and, and big. The card quality is good. 
So uh, no issues at all with the quality of the components. And speaking of that cube randomizer, from what I can tell, and obviously I haven't done scientific experiments, but I've done some checks to just see what the distribution is. And the distribution seems to be pretty good with that cube randomizer because it can go out of one of three channels. And it does seem to be a pretty good distribution amongst those three channels. And that could be a huge problem if it doesn't seem to be that way. If they were always coming out in the present era, that would be a bummer. But it does seem to be a, a nice distribution of cubes there. So for the overall solo experience, what do I think of the loop? Well, first of all, I think that the loop is a unique take on cooperative games. Uh, generally speaking, cooperative games have a particular structure. You know, something bad happens, then you as players have to move around and do things to mitigate those bad things. And you've, you, you're trying to do positive things, but you're also trying to put out fires. And while this doesn't change necessarily that core structure of a cooperative game, it does enough to set it apart, even just by being able to have this idea of a loop, which is being able to exhaust and unexhaust cards and maybe even being careful about what types of cards you're getting into your deck so that you can have three, four, five different opportunities to trigger cards. Now that's gonna be expensive. You have to have a lot of energy cubes to do that, but it's, it's a neat little take, it's a neat little twist, and it's one that I think sets this game apart from other cooperative games that are of a similar length, a similar weight. I also think that this has really good replay value, especially when you consider the different variants that are in the game. Just the base game itself, I feel like presents a nice enough challenge and you can easily kind of scale things with player count uh, if you're playing the solo game that I think also changes and makes the game feel a little different if you're playing with three agents or four agents versus two agents. And, and I think that gives it a little bit of a replay, but then you can have these whole different kind of variants that have twists on the gameplay. Some of them even have different components, things along those lines. As I mentioned before, I do think it's also a positive. I wanna spend uh, just a moment more talking about it. I appreciate how easy it is to either play with two agents or three agents or four agents. Just a matter of shuffling them all up into one shared deck, but one by one turning those cards over and being able to somewhat manipulate who you want to be the current agent, especially as you get new cards into your deck, but not necessarily always being able to determine that is a nice little twist as well. I like that quite about uh, quite a bit. Also, you, I don't think that as a solo game, you're losing anything that's in the multiplayer game. Uh, you, you really are getting, I feel, the same exact experience, except maybe you're not gonna have that table talk where you're discussing strategy. That's lost, but otherwise, the core elements of the game are there in the solo game. Finally, I think that this is the perfect length for the type of game it is. It's not so quick and over so fast and, and that it feels like a filler by any means. It doesn't overstay its welcome. I feel like it does just the right amount in the right amount of time. And so I feel like it is one that oftentimes when I'm looking for that hour or so long co-op game, this is gonna be high up on the list because it gives me a really nice experience in that amount of time. All of this being said, I think that The Loop is an excellent solo game. And for that reason, I'm gonna be giving it an 8.5 out of 10 and the Dice Tower Seal of Excellence. So thank you so much for your time as always and have a great day.